I think I being really honest with you about this, I was I was pretty scared. If I look back on it now, I was like, you know, you, you I think every marketeer has that sort of thing slightly at the back of their mind going, is this is this going to be a terrible mistake? Are they going to find me out and realize that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But actually, as I said, you know, it's only when you make that sort of transition from, you know, a, a big multinational like Diageo that you realize actually how much you do know and how much how many skills you, you kind of have picked up over the years. But you're, you're right, it was it was a just a fundamentally different challenge. And I think what gave me the confidence that this was the right thing to do was, although, although Access Technologies is fundamentally a B2B company, we're now starting to talk directly with the end consumer as well, because we feel that it's our duty not to just inform, you know, the window manufacturer or the door manufacturer or the architect uh, about our products, but actually, if you can create this kind of pull, um, you know, this demand for, for, for the products at a consumer level, actually, you can you can generate much much better sales off the back of it. And I guess an example would be the likes of, you know, Intel, you know, the computer processing company that. You know, ultimately, they were selling a product B two B because their products ended up in in you know um, in laptops and desktops, but that didn't stop them communicating their market leading position to consumers in the market because actually that became one of the reasons that consumers would would choose a certain computer because they knew that it contained uh, you know an Intel Pentium processor. Uh, another example might be Gore Tex. You know, they didn't initially make their own ranges of, of clothing. You know, they were an ingredient brand that went into other, you know, other brands, but that didn't stop them really advertising to consumers what they were all about because, um, you know, Gore-Tex actually is one of the main reasons that people choose a particular jacket because they know it's gonna have the best waterproof features. And I think that's what we, we need to do now uh, at Access Technologies is just really um, start to talk to the end consumer about when you come to buy a new window or put a new deck down in your house, you know, you could use a type of wood that's not very sustainable. It's only going to last maybe 10, 15 years, or you can use um, a product like Acquire, which is one of our brands, uh, which has, you know, got a warranty for 50 years and it's incredibly sustainable. And that's really, you know, part of my job is, yeah, we need to do all the B2B stuff really, really well. But on top of that, there's this element of B2C marketing and communication that we need to start to kind of build and develop uh, our skills in. So that's really um, that's really what I, I do on a day-to-day -day basis is sort of channel my energy between the B2B and the B2C side. Yeah, and I think that's uh, absolutely brilliant because the problem with a lot of B2B marketers, I think, is that they are B2B marketers. So they only think <laughs> like B2B marketers and uh, you have uh, probably such a big advantage like in, uh, in you know, bringing something that uh, most B2B companies don't do. And uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, branding campaigns is, uh, is uh, driving awareness, even on a wider audience. And B2B uh, marketers, I think, are really obsessed by sort of uh, targeting and focus. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think it's the, the best approach. Like think like a B2C marketer. If you wanna do, I think B2B marketing that is gonna be different. Uh, I, think, I think you're absolutely right because at the end of the day, um, even the people in a B2B environment that you're marketing your products uh, to are also consumers as well. Um, you know, an architect when they go home, is also a person that has windows in their house. It's also somebody that has, you know, maybe a deck. And, and so I think it's, it, it, it comes back to this um, debate over, you know, very, very targeted marketing versus mass marketing. And I'm, uh, I'm rereading, you know, the book by Byron Sharp, uh, how, how Brands Grow at the moment. And I think, you know, absolutely, you know, fundamental read for any, any kind of aspiring marketers out there, but you know, he 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 talks, you know, about the importance of, of of mass marketing, and 
if you if you just talk to a very very limited group of uh, consumers or in a B2B space, you know, you're only going to be able to be able to sell a certain amount of products. And if you if you embrace sort of a, a broader mass marketing approach, you know, yes, you're talking to people that you might be selling to today, but you're also talking to people that might be ready to buy your products, you know, next year and the year after that and the year after that. And uh, I think there's a lot to be said about not making your marketing too targeted, which I know is very fashionable today. Everyone's like target, target, target. But actually, if you can talk to a broader audience that might not be your target market today, you could well find that they're your target market tomorrow and, and, and further into the future.